Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. And this is Dushant uh, from Wiley Global Technology. And, uh, let me let me share my screen. Uh, hope I can, everyone can see my screen. Yeah, now we can see. Sir. Okay, thank you. Right. So uh, uh, this is Dushant from Wiley Global Technology, and uh, I belong to a team called DANI, Data Analytics and Insight uh, in Wiley, Sri Lanka. Uh, today, uh, we will be um, discussing about the data science and machine learning. And um, uh, I will be walking you through the, uh, the details and also the uh, basic, uh, uh, the skill set that required in this particular field. And also, of course, uh, we will touch base on some of the uh, base, uh, high level machine learning techniques that is used uh, in the industry. So, Okay. Uh, before we start, uh, let's just, uh, let's get an example. For instance, a sales manager in supermarket, uh, and uh, he wants to increase the sales or profit. And also maybe he wants to predict about the product that a customer can choose. So in that case, uh, in that situation, uh, data science will be really helpful. Uh, it can play a major role and provide necessary conclusions to you. So in this, this uh, session, uh, we are going to look into those things. Um, let's, um, again, we'll, uh, we can take the same example, a supermarket uh, uh, and a manager. So uh, consider a manager wants to increase the profit. So what are the, uh, what is, what are the things he will uh, start with? So the, uh, he will definitely need a, information, right, data. So he will start with uh, collecting a data about the customers uh, who visited this uh, supermarket or uh, who made a purchase in the supermarket. So he actually uh, collect the data. So what are the data uh, that he will be collecting? Um, it may be a demographic data, geographic, uh, product uh, bought by a customer, uh, money spends, income, interest. There are like various things that you can uh, get an information. So using those uh, data, um, the manager goes back and he analyzes and we apply some techniques, models and all. And he finds out that uh, the uh, he finds out there is a high sales for biscuits during the weekend. Then what he does, he increased the quantity. He increased the quantities and the varieties during those, uh, uh, those uh, days so that he can convert the, uh, he can convert it into the sales and also he can get more profit out of it. So that is how uh, the very uh, high level, the basic uh, flow goes for, uh, for the data science. And um, also data science is a field that uh, uses uh, process, algorithms, tools, methods, et cetera. Uh, and uh, they extract insights from data. Right? So uh, this data can be uh, structured and unstructured format. Right? It, this can be either uh, structured or in unstructured. So what is structured data? Um, structured data uh, is, is, it has a consistent order. Uh, it, it can be easily accessed or used. For example, you can uh, say uh, names, customer names, address, phone number, transaction details. All these things are considered as a uh, structured data where it can be easily accessible. And unstructured data uh, is actually not organized in the predefined manner. So you don't have a, a proper predefined data model for that. Uh, for example, you can consider the, the documents, the text, which is in the text format, uh, videos, audios, images, all these things are considered as an unstructured format. So uh, in the data science, so uh, we are using all these uh, process, some set of process, algorithms, tools, and method using those uh, data. And um, so uh, also um, data science is a multidisciplinary field, right? It combines uh, mathematics, statistics, computer science, econometrics, there are like a few other fields as well. 
um basically it, it it's all about extracting a data preparing a data analyzing it visualizing it and in, maintaining the proper information out of it so here uh, we uh, i have shown you um the areas that data science uh, is um, uh, taking over like for example uh, one is a uh, domain knowledge okay domain knowledge is a uh, it's a general thing right maybe um, um if you uh, if you are working for an uh, specific industry for example if it is an uh, education industry or telecommunication industry um, so you need to know about that particular uh, Uh, industry yeah that is a domain knowledge so so that you can get a uh, client uh, requirement and also you can uh, highlight the important criteria and also it will be very helpful uh, when you understand the domain that you are working in very much uh, then um, we also have uh, we need a statistical knowledge right where um, you will be applying descriptive statistics inferential statistics and uh, mathematics side um, Uh, calculus, differential calculus, uh, discrete mathematics—all uh, these things are very uh, important when it comes to uh, data science uh, field. Yes. Okay. So uh, everyone can hear me, right? There's no interruption. Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear. You. Okay. Okay. uh so then uh, the designs and methods and also uh, tuning and fitting the model so that is also a uh, important uh, uh, thing that is available uh, that needed in the uh, data science field and uh, database languages like uh, uh, sql hadoop and uh, data prepare uh, pre processing technique data validation technique uh, data infrastructures all these also involved in this particular uh, field data science field and uh, then comes the most uh, important one which is machine learning which uh, actually uh, deals with um, multiple algorithm the techniques various techniques and also you will be working with you will be uh, using the programming languages like python r and etc um, but uh, python and r are the two programming languages mainly used in uh, data science field uh, when it comes to machine machine learning and all so this uh, this gives a clear understanding how um, Uh, it has a cross disciplinary field right the data science is not focusing on very one uh, specific area it actually mix with multiple areas we we uh, we saw about um, data uh, data science so what is data science and all uh, then why we need data science so we all talk about data science and different things nowadays it has become a buzzword uh, why actually we need data science again we can uh, consider an example um for example you can say uh, uh, weather forecasting system okay um for weather forecasting system you can um, you collect the data from various uh, sources uh, it is it, it may be a ships uh, aircraft radar satellites etc and again these data can be in any format structured or unstructured format and you analyze those data and you use to uh, use those things to create a model so what is that model uh, going to give you so this is a predictive model right uh, where we it comes to predictive analytics so you uh, build a model and those model can be used for predicting a weather uh, weather or uh, natural calamities like uh, cyclone or tornadoes so that is how uh, that is why we need science which is very helpful to uh, predict certain things in the future and also you can consider uh, another examples like self driving cars so you collect the data from the sensors and uh, you build a model and that's where the uh, uh, it knows where to turn where to stop when there is any obstacles it has to stop all those things we train those uh, system and it is able to predict and uh, act accordingly so thus um, data science is really helpful uh, for making predictions and decisions okay and also it perform uh, it find the land uh, call, it 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 also helps to find the uh, problems and uh, again we make models using the collected data and we visualize the results through charts and etc 
And um, next uh, comes to uh, the there are uh, different phases in uh, life cycle of data science. So these are the different phases. Uh, one is the uh, data discovery phase that you, know, you can see. Uh, data discovery phase is the place where you actually identify the uh, business problem that needs to be solved. Okay. And also uh, you need uh, you need to collect data uh, for that particular, uh, business problem. So you need a data for that and you need a relevant data, which may be in a different formats, uh, structured and unstructured format. And once you, uh, you are good with that and you know what you wanted to solve the business problem, then you go for, and you have a data, uh, a pool of data that you have, and then you go to the next phase, which is data preparation. So here, since we are getting data from multiple sources, uh, so we need it may be in a different format. So you need to convert that into a proper format where that uh, can be applied to your model. Uh, this in also involves like uh, data cleaning, uh, which is like a process of fixing and uh, fix, uh, removing the incorrect data. And it, there may be a duplicates because we are collecting a data from multiple sources. And uh, then you will uh, need to do some transformations, uh, which is also considered as a data wrangling and data managing uh, as the task that you can do. So once uh, you are good with the data preparation, and then you uh, go for the uh, planning and building model. So this is where actually you are applying the uh, models to the uh, uh, the data that you have uh, collected. So you uh, start tuning the model, or you try out with the different techniques, and you come up with the proper and the best model, which can give a better performance and better accuracy uh, in predicting uh, in, in predicting anything. And then, um, then is the oper operationalized uh, phase uh, where uh, the code and technical documents reports are, are delivered. And you are uh, this is a phase that you are making sure that it is ready to ready for the full deployment. Uh, then, uh, then uh, the next phase is actually uh, evaluation of models, and uh, and you provide the results to the uh, trans uh, the stakeholders uh, that you have uh, come up with uh, the models that you have come up with. That. So this is a life cycle of uh, data science. Um, and then comes to the uh, key components. Um, key components of data science are, these are the major uh, components like uh, data. So data is the foundation for data science. Eh? And, it, uh, and as we discussed, it may be in a different format and we need to work on that uh, to bring it in a proper way. Uh, then comes uh, programming. Uh, mainly the programming uh, here, we use um, uh, uh, Python and R, as I said, and also uh, when it comes to uh, different type of tasks like uh, um, uh, uh, big data engineering tasks, and also you will come up with the different uh, approaches and uh, you will work on uh, different uh, languages, uh, database languages and all. Then uh, mathematics, statistics, probability. Again, it is the foundation for machine learning techniques uh, where uh, it deals with, uh, as we discussed, it deals with the uh, certain uh, uh, statistical techniques and uh, mathematical inferential cal uh, differential integral calculus and all those algebra, all those things and all involved in that. And uh, the main, uh, the other one, uh, uh, machine learning, which uh, contains different set of algorithms and uh, and uh, you will be try out, uh, you will uh, build a model you will train the model uh, retrain the model tune the model all those things happen those tasks can all happen uh, to the machine learning uh, uh, side so on the whole uh, the data science process uh, the high level data science process looks like this um, yeah Data business opportunities, finding a data source, which is a um, uh, discovery phase, and then you go for explore uh, and visualize the data, clean the data, which is a data preparation stage, and uh, training the model, building uh, building model uh, state, and then you go for a, a deploy. You deploy the best models, 
then uh, then monitor manage measure success and then uh, you might have to uh, check uh, verify on retrain or the retire, retire the model so retrain the model with whether if uh, if the model expires then you need to go back and retrain or else uh, and, and also sometimes you might have to retire the model that you have actually built so this is a very high level idea about uh, data science process along with the, we saw uh, the different phases uh, in data, data science and uh, next comes um, data science or job roles. So, so these job roles are uh, very, uh, it, it depends on the organization and it depends on the industry it changes. Uh, some big organization may have multiple uh, roles within the data science team and uh, some co companies they uh, they will have a very limited roles based on their requirement when it comes to medium and uh, uh, medium level uh, organizations and all okay. data scientist is uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, popular role that uh, we have heard right so data scientists are responsible for um, modeling a complex problems discovering insights uh, identifying the opportunities etc and uh, they mainly collaborate um, very effectively with um, uh, internal stakeholders and uh, also uh, cross-functional teams uh, to help them to solve the problems. And uh, it also, as I said, it also involves uh, um, building and training machine learning models. They mainly work on that, uh, which where they build a model which can be reliable for making predictions in the future. And machine learning engineer is another uh, a popular role, but it is not. Uh, it is not. It may not be available in all the organization. It is very rarely happen. Uh, they are like um, we can say uh, research. They research new uh, data approaches and algorithms to be used in adaptive system. Actually, they they uh, they focus on those things. And of course, they uh, there is a similarity between data science and uh, scientists and the machine learning engineers as well uh, but most most of the organization they just straight away go for the data scientist role and then uh, we uh, have data analyst so data analyst is like a junior data scientist so this is the first step for to enter into the data science field uh, i would say like so they uh, they are they actually provide reports and visualization um, that, that that can be very helpful to make a decision uh, in the organization. But they very rarely work on the predictive analytics side. Uh, data analyst mostly works on the descriptive analytics side. And then uh, statistician is a role like um, uh, it, it, it was earlier very popular, like uh, now uh, most of these roles are changed as a data scientist. And it is also similar to uh, uh, the role that they work on uh, various statistical and predictive models actually. And uh, then we have um, uh, data architect. So data architect ensures um, uh, whether the data solutions build for performance and, uh, um, and they also focus on um, I mean, of course, they they uh, focus on creating a new da database system, and often they focus on uh, improve the performance and functionalities uh, in the existing system section. And uh, then we uh, then be a uh, business intelligence developer. So BI uh, business intelligence is a set of technologies and the practices. Uh, which can be transformed the organization information into an uh, actionable item like uh, reports and the visualization. So those who are uh, involved in those uh, uh, activities, like they, they are called as a data uh, BI uh, developers, and they mostly involved in developing and deploying the uh, reports, BI interfaces, and the maintaining uh, the reports and all. Then uh, we have, uh, we have enterprise architect and then uh, big data engineer so big data engineer um, they mainly focus um, they actually work with the uh, very large amount of data and they involve in uh, collecting uh, processing and uh, uh, loading the data into the uh, database system and they heavily work on a uh, 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 very large data set actually and um, these are the uh, data science tools and languages uh, 
uh, statistics and mathematics. So uh, we discuss about this: so descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, linear algebra, um, differential calculus, discrete mathematics. All these things are uh, plays a role here, and that knowledge is uh, somewhat. Uh, some, to some extent is uh, necessary. And R and Python is a programming language that we mainly use. Um, big data side, uh, Hadoop ecosystems, uh, uh, Apache Spark, uh, MLlib, all these uh, are very important. And uh, business intelligence side, uh, Power, Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, ClickSense, ClickView, Looker, all these visualization tools are mainly used. And uh, machine learning, uh, there are like certain uh, libraries and packages, and uh, there are certain uh, various techniques uh, that we will be looking into that uh, in the next uh, slides. Uh, and advanced machine learning, which is a deep learning, uh, which involves artificial neural network, convolutional neural network, et cetera. And data visualization, um, this is a business intelligence uh, tools also has a data visualization uh, to, uh, opportunity like Power BI, Tableau and all, uh, again, you have a data visualization. But here, this one, uh, Matplotlib, Panda, Seaborn, all these things also can be used for the uh, data visualization and ggplot, which is used in the R programming and uh, uh, D3JS also uh, are one of the better options that we have. So that's uh, uh, the high level, um, I mean, that's the introduction to the uh, data science and the various um, job roles, the skills and how these uh, process work uh, in the most of the organization. And uh, next, um, let's, uh, talk, let's discuss about uh, machine learning. Okay, um, so uh, machine learning, okay, what is machine learning? Um, machine learning is, um, it's like uh, but usually humans uh, learns from the past experience, right? And uh, machines follow instructions given by the humans. That's how the uh, usual process happen. And what if uh, humans can train the machine to learn from the past data? So that that's where the machine learning comes into the place. So here, uh, algorithm that can learn from observational data and can make predictions based on it. So you can learn, uh, you make a, an algorithm that can learn from the past data and you uh, make them uh, reliable to make a predictions based on it. So that is where the machine learning, uh, that is how the, what, that is what machine learning is. Okay, let, uh, again, we'll uh, take a quick example. Um, for if you take an example like um, uh, music platform and users listen to the song and they like the song and dislike the song based on their different aspects, right? They they may like based on uh, if it is uh, if uh, if it is a, a fast a tempo fast tempo song, or else the uh, in, uh, intensity is very light, or else. Um, if there's certain instruments used, they may like and dislike based on various aspects. So we consider it as a variables, right? So um, in that example, like let's say, let's take uh, two uh, variables like um, uh, intensity and tempo and uh, where the intensity is from light to fast and uh, ten, uh, sorry, uh, light to soaring and tempo is from light to fast. And we have a data collected and uh, each point represent one song. And here uh, the one song mentioned the uh, song on the top, it mentioned um, uh, the, the, the intensity is very high and the tempo is like almost moderate. And uh, here this song, uh, the tempo and intensity is very light. So similarly, we have uh, data points uh, plotted on the uh, dual X, uh, w, I mean X and Y axis. And uh, and now uh, we say the circles are the songs liked by the users, and the diamond symbols are liked by the uh, disliked by the uh, uh, you, the users in the platform. Okay, so we know that uh, there are certain songs disliked by disliked and liked by the user. And there you can by looking at that, there you can see there are two groups, right? So on this particular group, so all the songs are liked by the user. And in this particular group, all the songs are uh, disliked by the user. Okay, so now you have some sort of understanding when you plot the data points into the uh, visual representation. And uh, let's 
take a new song so you are getting a new song Uh, which is a song A, and that song uh, tempo is fast and intensity is uh, like on an average more than medium. Okay, and that particular song falls into this particular area. Okay, then then uh, if we have to make a, a prediction, so what we will do? So is it like this song is going to be uh, liked by the user or disliked by the user? So what is the decision that we can make by looking at the? Uh, Uh, the the visual. So in this visual that we can say um, uh, this song uh, falls into the group very closer to the songs liked by the user. So uh, this has a high probability that a song can be liked by the user. So we go for a decision saying this song uh, can be liked by the. Uh, we make a prediction this kind of song song will be liked by the uh, users. That is because. it falls closer to the songs other song that is already liked by the based on the past data right and uh, now come a next another song which is a song b we can consider um and that particular song falls into this area okay, where the intensity and the tempo is medium so here it's really hard for us to make a decision right uh, earlier it was very easy very too many songs falls into that and it was very closer and, and i and uh, dislike songs are far away so from that particular point so i was able to make a, a quick decision on that but here it is really hard and uh, what we can do here is there comes another technique that available uh, which is a uh, we identify the nearest few points for example you find five nearest points uh, data points that is closer to the song that you are going to predict so so here uh, in this range in this area i can see there are total five songs comes into that uh, closer to this song b and four songs already liked by the user and one song disliked so here the majority of the vote goes to the songs liked uh, so then what we do we go ahead and make a prediction that song b also can be liked by the user so this is one of the uh, one is a very basic example for one actual uh, algorithm that is uh, uh, k nearest neighborhood so that is the one algorithm this use uh, k nearest neighborhood which is the nearest k points so we you pick k points like five points nearer to near to the new uh, point that you are going to predict and you identify the pattern and you make a decision based on that so that is a k nearest uh, neighborhood but if you can also go uh, into that and uh, analyze and check on those uh, in depth uh, uh, in depth of those algorithms actually so um, right so that is how so machine learning is like we process the data we have a data we have a historical data everything is ready and you process those data you make the system learn you train the system and if there is anything you go back pick the new data and adjust the data and uh, you retrain the system and once the model is ready and it is ready to make a prediction so that's how a uh, machine learning works so uh, what is the difference bit, uh, the, uh, between adl ml ai so the, we have heard about uh, these things um, like deep learning machine learning artificial intelligence and all so wh what is the difference in that uh, why um, there are a lot of uh, things uh, discussions going on right so uh, to uh, to be clear like uh, artificial intelligence is a it's a it's a broader field actually and it's a technique which enables machine to mimic human behavior so it's a very broader field and uh, machine learning is a sub field of artificial intelligence okay uh, and the, what is special with machine learning this is a technique uses statistical or um, uh, econometrical methods and uh, uh, that enables machine to learn from the past data so here we are dealing with the past data so that's the uh, specialty of the machine learning and uh, it's uh, Uh, you we can't say uh, all the uh, artificial intelligence techniques uh, ai techniques are uh, machine learning because there are like certain things the rule based uh, uh, rule based uh, systems uh, robotic uh, computer visions so all these are um, are the subfield of uh, comes as a subfield as a artificial intelligence 
and uh, then uh, deep learning uh, again deep learning is a subset of machine learning and uh, again it deals with the data but this deep learning is very powerful because it is it has a capability to uh, uh, have a better performance when it comes to very large data set so that's why uh, most uh, now the day deep learning are becoming uh, popular so this is a, a quick graph so we uh, uh, artificial intelligence is existing from the very earlier uh, 20th centuries and uh, um, we heard about machine learning techniques from to, to the 1980s and now 2010 after 2010 we are uh, working with the deep learning and there are like uh, capabilities for deep learning because we have huge data and there is a role for big data as well and why deep learning um, as i said uh, older algorithms when the amount of data increase the performance may be uh, stagnant so it won't be better but deep learning uh, algorithms when the amount of data increase still the performance you will be getting a better performance and um, some uh, other applications of machine learning so i just wanted to give you some examples that is already available in the most of most of the things you would have heard seen but may not be uh, aware that there is a machine learning uh, thing behind that right so one is like netflix so in netflix we have a, 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 a thing called like when you watch a movie there and uh, uh, and similar movie movies get a recommendation right <clears throat> when you uh, when you like some movies and you get a similar recommendation so this is actually a, a machine learning algorithm works on that uh, which is called as recommendation system which involves uh, collaborative filtering and uh, and uh, there are so many uh, other techniques as well so this is one of the very good example and facebook again we all know they are actually using in really like uh, friend suggestions uh, tagging a friend face uh, friends faces uh, those are like uh, Uh, there are like uh, these uh, machine learning works behind that paypal's uh, fraud detection is another one good example uh, it capable of uh, predicting the fraud fraudulent transactions and amazon you would have seen many things there product suggestions so you uh, pro, uh, those who bought product a also bought product b c so you got those recommendation right so that uh, are actually involves a machine learning algorithms and customer segmentation and uh, you you would notice based on the demand uh, the price of the product changes so that's also actually uh, involve uh, machine learning and uber uber has uh, uber and pick me also has some uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, techniques that they are using and sentiment analysis when it comes to text and uh, uh, text analytics like um, you get a data uh, like uh, facebook comments uh, twitter tweets and uh, some of the reviews from the website so these are text data so you want to identify the sentiment like whether it is a positive sentiment negative or neutral so all these things uh, for those things actually uh, natural language processing is helpful uh, and it helps to analyze the sentiment so that is another example customer churn analysis uh, it's the, and, and, uh, there also we have um, we they are using like customer churn in the telecommunication industry especially uh, a customer moving from one uh, one uh, brand to another brand like for example like dialog to mobitel something like that so to predict those uh, uh, churn customer and give better offers better uh, better uh, Uh, things to those customers to stop them churning uh, moving away from the brand um look alike audience so uh, look alike audience is uh, heavily used in the ad tech uh, tech market and ad tech technologies uh, where uh, you go and pick uh, uh, pick a pool of customers um uh, based on a customer the set of customers you already have who already uh, converted to your brand so you you have their attributes behavior and this demographic and you know those customers already converted to your brand and you go and pick uh, you go and target the similar attributes uh, behavior demography who has that uh, the similar way and you go and target those uh, those customers and you put a website web ad and all and they get a 
uh, it's make them to convert to U1. And then we have text categorization or visual recognition as well. Um, so, okay, we are moving. Right, so what are the types of uh, machine learning? There are major three types, right? Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Um, supervised learning, what is supervised learning? Supervised learning is a model that can predict with the help of the labeled data set. So what is labeled data set? So you have a data set and you consider you have a multiple variables and um, but you know that you are going to predict certain variables. So for example, you have um, we you have an employer list and their uh, qualification, etc., and their salaries. Okay, you are going to predict a, a salary of a new employee who comes with these similar uh, attributes. So then you know that you are going to predict the employer salary, right? Salary is the output variable. So when you have a data set uh, with the output variable, then it is considered as a labeled data set and you will apply you will consider you will apply or uh, supervised learning techniques for that particular data set so um, a basic example uh, other than that i can give uh, so we have a data set here uh, there are data set like uh, a black color shape one and then which is round and another one a black color and which is sharp the weather handle is black and all those things these are the attributes that we have for that particular uh, uh, product or something and i know that uh, if this uh, if it is sharp i know that it is knife if it is black and uh, round shape i know it is food so th since i have a data set a known data set where I know I'm going to predict what one variable and I know what that variable is. So then uh, it is a supervised learning technique you need to apply. And when uh, when a new data comes in, we don't know what it is. When new data comes with the similar attribute, uh, which is sharp and handle is black and all those things, the system uh, identifies and it gives a response as knife. So that's how you train the model. So when you are dealing with the uh, label data set, then you have to have perform a supervised learning techniques. And uh, when it comes to supervised learning, you have two, uh, two types, another two types. So which is classification technique and regression technique. So now we have, we know that output variable, the response variable should be there for the supervised learning. And uh, um, what type of data that output variable is. So based on that, you will, you will apply classification or regression technique. So uh, let's say salary example, I'm taking the same salary uh, employer data where I have a salary, which is output variable. The salary uh, is a, a quantitative variable, right? So you, when you are going to predict a quantitative variable, you need to apply regression based algorithm. And when you have output variable in a categorical variable, like uh, purchased or not, yes, no, true, false. Uh, brand A, brand B, brand C, something like that, which is categorical, not numerical. In that case, you will be applying classification techniques. So that's how you differentiate and apply the proper uh, uh, techniques for uh, the data set that you have. Uh, classification problem, I can give you an uh, example uh, identifying spam mails. Okay, you have a data set, a known data set, which is a set of emails, uh, like about 1000 emails you have. And you know each and every email, whether it is spam or not. So this, uh, since you know you have a non known data and you know you are going to predict whether it's spam or not, and that output variable is a categorical variable, and you are going to apply classification problem in supervised learning. And you put that data into the model, and once your model is ready, and when a new mail comes in and the system scans, uh, and it is capable of predict that, whether that mail is a spam or not spam. So this is one of the examples for classification problem. Uh, when it comes to regression problem, again, we can take a weather prediction example. Uh, like uh, you have a known data set with which you have two uh, variable, humidity and temperature. And you are going to predict humidity based on the temperature, right? So you, uh, since the uh, the predictor, uh, the output variable, which is a humidity, which you are going to predict, is a continuous quantitative variable. So you will go for regression problem, and you apply that to the model. And when you get a new data, which is a temperature like 40 degrees Celsius, 
and system is able to predict what would be the humidity for that particular 40 degree Celsius temperature Celsius uh, temperature. So this type of data set, you will be applying regression problems. Okay, and then uh, what are the different types of uh, uh, algorithms that are available? There are like decision tree, uh, random forest, linear uh, logistic regression, naive base, k nearest neighborhood. Uh, so all the, all these are a polynomial regression. So all these are uh, applied for the uh, all these are supervised learning technique, but these are these. Algorithms are applied for classification problem, which has the output variable is categorical. And linear regression is, uh, uh, is applied for the regression problem where the uh, output variable is quantitative. So random forest, uh, logistic regression, uh, this, these are like actually for categorical uh, classification problem, which, is, which has a categorical output variable. And uh, then uh, you have uh, next is uh, so unsupervised learning. What is unsupervised learning? <laughs> We saw about uh, supervised learning, right? So uh, unsupervised learning is the, the algorithm is trained using the data that is unlabeled. So now it is unlabeled, right? So you, you have a data set and you don't know what you are going to predict. So you don't have a very specific output variable. So you don't have that output variable, uh, but you are not going to predict any specific variable like salary. You are not going to predict like that. So it's just a data set, but you are going, uh, you don't have a label data set, which is output variable, uh, but you are going to predict a pattern in the data set. So that kind of situation, you will be applying an unsupervised learning because you don't have an output variable. In this uh, case, uh, what I can uh, same uh, the knife and spoon data set that we can consider. Uh, here we have uh, a known data, which is uh, uh, this uh, shapes. These are the shapes, and these are the round shape and handle is this like that. So this this uh, we have a data here, but we don't know whether it is knife or spoon. We don't have that information. But we have a data. We have the all the uh, variables that is relevant here, and then you uh, train the model and it recognizes the pattern and the response you give. So if the shapes are like this, it is one cluster. If the shapes are like this, uh, like round and black, it is another group. So you identify there are two clusters in the data set. So then you can say after identifying the clusters, you can label the cluster. Like if the shape is a uh, shop and the handle is uh, black, then I would say this cluster as a knife and I, uh, the black spoon and uh, black color uh, and uh, round shape, then I will give this cluster as a uh, spoon. So then that can be done. So that is unsupervised learning. Again, you have two tech, uh, two algorithms in uh, uh, two uh, types in unsupervised learning. One is clustering and association. So clustering is uh, is the one we saw earlier. Is a similar type. The method of dividing the object into cluster uh, based on the similarities and dissimilarities between the objects. Okay. So that's how you form a group based on the similarities of those attributes. And uh, that's how clustering work. Association is like uh, identifying the co-occurrence of items. So this is where, this is one of the association uh, rule, uh, what we can consider. Uh, the, uh, those who bought prod, uh, ice cream also bought another product. Or else those who bought uh, bread also bought uh, jam and butter. So to identify the uh, co-occurrence of items uh, with, uh, with this is another, uh, it's, a, it's called an association uh, rule. Um, for example, example for clustering, I can give, um, again, it's a pattern recognition. Um, uh, let's take a telecom company who wants to reduce its customer chain rate, right? By providing personalized call and data plans. Okay, you have an unlabeled data set. You have a call duration, internet usage of each and every customers. These are the two variables you have. And uh, you um, apply a clustering model and then you identify there are like three clusters, like um, one, this cluster one who actually use internet high, but very less call duration. And cluster three, they use high, uh, high call duration and very less internet usage. Uh, cluster two is they use both internet and calls 
uh, very heavily. So the I found we found that uh, there are like three clusters in the data set. Then uh, what do you do is like you may want uh, cluster one who actually use high internet usage. The you want them to use more calls as well. So at the time, what do you do? So you will provide a low call, uh, low cost for the call and all those things. And the one who is uh, in the cluster three. Uh, who is actually using heavy calls but not using internet so it may be a reason whether they are using feature phone or smartphone uh, or not and also they may uh, may not have a better package so then you will provide a better internet package pair uh, uh, for them those customers and you make them use a uh, heavy internet and that will increase uh, the sale and as well as that will avoid uh, making the customer churn as well so this is how the clustering algorithm works and uh, association uh, is as uh, let's say uh, for example customer 1 they bought bread jam cake grapes chocolate and customer 2 bread bread jam apple and milk they bought and customer 3 who uh, actually this particular customer also bought uh, bread but if a new customer buys bread then what we are saying is he is likely to buy jam also how we are saying that because the customers who bought brought bread they both brought jam as well so then you have a high frequency where the customers bought bread also bought jam so then you are saying the customer 3 who is likely to buy jam so that's the association uh, rule uh, work and these are the set of algorithms that is um, Uh, available for unsupervised learning, k-means clustering, uh, which is a clustering algorithm. Hierarchical clustering is a clustering algorithm, and a priori, uh, a priori is the one uh, that actually works on um, uh, association rule. and uh, singular value decomposition fuzzy mean uh, principal component analysis which helps you to reduce the uh, dimensions and partial uh, least squares so these are like bit of high uh, very uh, advanced uh, techniques are still available but it's a very uh, very it's really a reliable one and it's more powerful techniques actually um then uh, then next is uh, reinforcement learning again um, it's bit different from supervised and uh, unsupervised learning so here the system takes decisions based on past rewards for its action so that is how the reinforcement learning has happened so it uh, how, for example how we can say is uh, you have uh, you have a uh, input variable for example it is a image okay and you have this image and you put uh, you get uh, in, uh, give that to the uh, system and uh, it, the response we got is it is a cat but it uh, but then what happens we know uh, this image is not a, a, a cat and we give a feedback to that so no this uh, this is wrong and it is a dog so then uh, what uh, systems does is it learns uh, that uh, this image is not a cat the it is actually a dog so next time when uh, when you give uh, input a, a similar image and a system is capable of predicting that it is dog so that is a reinforcement learning very simple example like it is basically um it learns from the past right so it uh learns from the mistake something like that so that's a uh, reinforcement learning and it is mostly a uh, rule based algorithm that comes into this uh uh this uh, particular uh, uh reinforcement learning and also used in the self uh, driving cars as well so um this uh, these are the uh, uh, these are the very uh, just wanted to share all the uh, the details of machine learning techniques uh, there are various technique and also we have uh, different uh, 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 deep learning techniques where it involves artificial neural network uh, convolutional neural network for image processing um, and um, yeah rnn uh, recurrent neural network which is uh, for for a, for a continuous data like predicting a stock market and all those things are used there so that is a deep learning uh, part so and uh, the mainly just wanted to uh, focus on uh, unsupervised supervised and reinforcement learning and these are the algorithms that is available and heavily used in the industry um yeah to that uh, i just uh, finished my um, uh, 
my presentation and I will pass this to Piyomi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, happy to take uh, questions now. Um, thank you, sir. That was really insightful for those who are interested in data science and machine learning. Now it's time for the Q&A session. Uh, you can put in the chat to unmute yourself and ask your questions now. Hi, thank you very much for this session. It was very insightful. Uh, I have a, uh, so you you couldn't cover regarding uh, how the deployment of this model work. Can you just uh, walk through that process as well? Um, yes, uh, actually, uh, yeah, because uh, within this uh, uh, 50 minute session, so it was really hard to cover all the things like uh, deployment uh, is actually similar to that, but mostly uh, the deployment tasks are done by uh, DevOps team, right? Um, and uh, you provide the, uh, provide the uh, model uh, to them and uh, where the model is uh, properly built and uh, they use a certain uh, certain techniques and uh, certain technologies and they are able to uh, deploy and also um, deployment is uh, depend on uh, what uh, how you are making it like it it, it may be uh, for the web publication it may be for any other thing and sometimes you may not uh, uh, need that to be shown in the web publication but you wanted to have it in the internal processing so that is um, it all actually depend and it follows in a different approaches um, and also it's similar to the uh, usual uh, deployment phases that we follow and mostly these data scientists uh, are uh, machine learning en engineers they won't be most heavily involved in the deployment phase uh, so you will build the model and uh, you will uh, pass it to the devops team and they are the one who work on uh, deployment phase thank you So when you are when you are with the um, when you are focusing on this, your main objective is building a model, uh, getting a better accuracy level, and it, uh, it. But you need to give a proper uh, model to the DevOps team to deploy. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Uh, there is another question. Uh, in order to master in the field, uh, what are the key areas? um uh, that we need to develop after graduating um yes uh, uh, since it is across uh, a multidisciplinary field like right, uh, you of course you need to have a knowledge on the python or r it's not necessary both so make sure you have a better uh, knowledge on either one programming and also uh, please be uh, you need to be very uh, strong on the uh, algorithms so how these algorithms the back end of this how this works and how to tune the model all those things you need to be very uh, you need to be very uh, you need to be very uh, you need to learn more on that uh, I would say these are the two areas that you need to be uh, strong uh, in this particular field, yeah, programming and uh, machine learning algorithm, and also uh, where and when to use which type of algorithm and how, how to uh, data, uh, data set, how to handle the data set. And feature engineering is one of the most important thing uh, because uh, to nowadays, uh, uh, most of our, uh, data scientists are like any uh, statisticians, machine learning engineers. They spend about seventy percentage of time uh, in uh, in preparing the data set, right? So they are working on cleaning, transforming the data set, and the thirty percentage of time goes to the uh, modeling uh, part. So, so that in that case. Um, you need to be very strong in feature engineering. We need to know how to uh, get the data, what type of data into the model and all, and tune the model. Um, recommend some extra courses that we need, we should do in order to improve our knowledge regarding machine learning. Um, 
uh, i would say um, it's uh, you need to uh, you need actually we need to th- uh, check ourselves first which area we are strong okay you some people may be very strong in uh, uh, the statistical models but they may not be very good in uh, uh, python or uh, some programming language so they need to choose that so uh, you need to find your weakness first uh, where you need to improvise since it is a multidisciplinary field so you need to uh, go by that uh courses i would yeah there are like uh, many courses available right uh, uh, yeah we do have a data science course in sri lanka ma- uh, master of data science and um, and uh, also there are like online courses also available you can uh, choose that and um yeah that these are the thing i could uh, recommend that okay what qualification that company is expecting a data science intern okay that's a another good question um since you are starting the data science field uh, at least you should have a, a basic knowledge in python and at least a basic knowledge in some of the other uh, machine learning techniques so make, maybe uh, you should be uh, aware of those areas python r r is the one you can choose um, yeah now nowadays python is very heavily used and also it is not only uh, these two things and if you wanted to uh, within data science if you wanted to focus on different field like you have a data engineering field as well right so you need to be uh, strong on those areas for example uh, 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 big data side uh, yeah uh, hadoop ecosystems uh, apache uh, and um, uh, yeah some of the data uh, sql uh database languages um and you need to work you need to have some knowledge on some of the uh, database like snowflake or netiza something like that so what are the basic requirement that should i okay that is i actually i have answered so some i as i said like you need to have some basic knowledge on programming and uh, i think this one was by okay what are the basic requirements or what should i cover to enter the data science field as a trainee yeah so that is as i said like yeah basic knowledge on the programming or and uh, within the data science uh, field like you may be into some other area like based on that requirement you need to be uh, you need to have those main, uh, basic knowledges okay uh what are the companies that can apply as intern data scientists uh, i am be, i am not very much aware of uh, the most of the companies do have data scientists as a intern for a intern um, we do have uh, a data scientist uh, data science team in uh, um, dialog and um, yeah and even in wiley we have and um, um what is um dialog wiley and there are some other companies in sri lanka i am not uh, limited on that um london stock exchange group scg i think they have but not very sure but you, i think i hope you can search on that can you give your personal experience as data scientist in sri lanka mainly, mainly how you do in the sri lanka okay um my personal experience um actually i i i i was i studied in uh, uh, i did abroad and uh, i came to sri lanka in 2014 uh, like 5 to 6 years back uh, and started my second job here uh, at the time it was uh, when i started it was very limited but now it is really growing and you can find lot of opportunities uh, in data science field but maybe not as uh, not many opportunities as data scientists and you have lot of opportunity for data engineering and uh, analytics engineering uh, um 
then also you have data analyst role as well um yeah data scientist role uh, it is actually uh, it's growing state but still growing and it has a future in sri lanka and we have a lot of uh, companies adapting to uh, data science nowadays um it seems there are no more questions and uh, we hope our effort was impactful for all of you okay and uh, hope to see you all from the next session thank you for joining